Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll have a look at the weather warnings, the GFS, GM, Eastern VF, GFS ensembles and finish up have a look at the UK Met Office run. Now we do have a lot of precipitation around at the moment and a lot of it is falling wintry. Um, we've had a lot of growl pool, hail, sleet and snow showers around. Snow more in the north and the west across parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland but a lot of these showers across England and Wales that are dying away a little bit now have been wintry of nature. Many areas seeing some sort of wintry mix. Even to areas in the south and the southeast, some areas in London have seen some wintriness and some snowflakes around as well. Nothing significant by any means but considering the winter we've had recently it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, Longer term, though, it's looking like we're going to go westerly once again. For as we head into March, there is an increased risk now from many of the models that we do see more of a blocked pattern, potentially easterly winds, turning things much colder to start meteorological spring. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we start by having a look at the live radar, you can see the rash of precipitation we have at the moment. Now, we did have quite a lot of precipitation across parts of England and Wales, it is now dying away a little bit, coming more exclusively in the north and west, where we still will be seeing some wintriness. Now, temperatures are a good few degrees above, uh, freezing around 4-5 or five degrees widely today, um, but we saw wintriness down for low-lying areas because we have deep convection, bringing that cold air down, uh, that really cold air aloft down, very temporarily within the showers, bringing temperatures down for 10-15 minutes as those showers do move through meaning we could we, we saw wintry precipitation quite widely but not a lot of accumulations really apart from perhaps the far north of england parts of northern ireland and scotland where a lot of this precipitation especially in land and over high ground is falling of a wintry nature and um, some falling snow a lot of heavy snow has been seen over scotland and we do still have yellow warnings in force for that still uh, will still keep coming over the course of the next few hours for if we'll start to die away into Friday morning. Still could be some shouts further northwards, but for the far southeast, I doubt we'll see anything too significant. We do need to keep an eye on this uh, precipitation over across northern uh, Northern Ireland, which is going to move across Northern England, and that could provide some enhanced precipitation across uh, Northern England, the northwest, northeast, and potentially the North Midlands as well. And it could provide some more significant wintriness perhaps snow for some but it will be quite marginal and we'll have to see how it does play out we'll have a look at the uk metaphors run at the end of the video see what that is showing but a bit of a wintry mix we're having at the moment um quite different to what we've had recently with, with big wet and windy westerly flow uh, so a little bit of a break from that but it probably will be going westerly once again after this brief colder spell so we do now have a look at the weather warnings. We do have a bit of a mix of warning across uh, Northern Ireland, Northern England and Scotland. We do start with an ice warning over Northern uh, Ireland from 8pm today till 9am tomorrow. Um, overnight showers mostly turn to rain, but still with some sleet or snow showers over higher ground, mainly into the highest routes by late evening. However, clear spells between showers will allow temperatures to drop towards freezing in places, some icy stretches possible um, on uh, untreated surfaces. And of course, showers will die um, towards the end of the night with more clouds spilling in from the west, allowing temperatures to recover a little bit. We have a snow and ice warning that we had yesterday. We had a look at that in detail on yesterday from 5 p.m. on Wednesday until 8 p.m. today. So it's expiring in the next couple of hours. And again, you can see a few uh, uh, 10 to 20 centimetres of higher ground. And then we have a more general snow and ice warning that is in force from 8 p.m. tonight until 9.30 tomorrow, replacing that snow and lightning warning. Further wintry showers with, with snowfall mainly over the hills will lead to icy surfaces, perhaps making for difficult travel conditions tonight. Snow mainly at elevations above 2 to 300 metres. Uh, likely to affect many areas this evening. They'll be heavy in places, perhaps bringing two to five centimetres of extra snow to higher routes across the Pennines and Scotland, where we've already seen 10, 20 centimetres in a few spots. And beyond midnight showers will become less widespread or for increasing rain or sleet away from some higher routes as parts of, uh, and parts of northern Scotland. However, as temperatures fall, icy stretches are possible more widely, especially on untreated surfaces. High likelihood lower end of the impact matrix. So potentially some still wintry hazards coming up, but it should slowly start to clear away. And by around lunchtime tomorrow, we won't have any warnings in force. So we now have a look at the GFS, GM and Eastern WF. See what's happening over the next sort of 10 to 14 days. Now I must say before we have a look at these, they are all going for a cold 
blocked um, pattern in the longer term. Some showing quite a potent easterly wind, some of the models showing more of a, just a slack easterly wind, but all going pretty cold. The ensembles, however, are more mixed, and we'll see that in a minute. Now, if we do run through, you can see generally still got a westerly flow. High pressure's trying to build up towards Scandinavia, which is a sign of the times, and you can see in seven days' time, we are generally under high pressure, still with westerly winds in the west, though. However, as we're towards day 10, a bigger build of pressure over the top of the country could turn things chilly with an inversion, cold overnight frost, but in the day, could temperatures get up into low teens as the sunshine does bring those temperatures up. But in the longer term, we see a proper high pressure system to our north of it. But Scandinavian high, this would be bitterly cold in January, but considering it's now be almost mid-March, uh, mid sorry, we're pulling in an easterly wind that is cold, would provide snow showers, growlful showers, wintry showers in general. Temperatures will be well below freezing overnight, but in the day, temperatures will still probably get to around 5, 6, 7 degrees with that. So not bitterly cold, but would be really quite cold for the time of year, uh, and would see spots seeing potentially uh, significant snowfall, um, especially with that easterly wind. So really cold from this GFS run, falling on from yesterday's run, which was cold, you can see that a good six to eight degrees below average, really quite chilly. And if we just see the sustain, we would pull in that even colder air that's over parts of Siberia and Russia potentially coming in. So really quite cold there. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, now this only goes out to day 10, but we'll see it does follow similar sort of pattern. High pressure eventually controlling over the top of the UK. And right towards the end of the run, we are pulling in a slack easterly flow. Cold air just to our east. Not as sort of a potent easterly as saw in the GFS run. So I did say they're all showing this block pattern, but not um, to the same sort of extent. This is more of just a dry, frosty sort of pattern. But still showing that high pressure trying to build towards Scandinavia. Trying to put in easterly winds. And this would be going pretty cold indeed potentially winter arriving into march so yeah very interesting from this gm run following on from the gfs um not potently cold not a uh, bitterly cold easterly wind but cold enough to give overnight frost some wintriness as well where we do see showers develop now if we have a look at the ecmwf see how that does compare Again, high pressure trying to build up towards Scandinavia, and right towards day 10, we are pulling in an easterly wind. Pretty cold easterly wind with that, uh, even bitterly cold perhaps. Look at that entry of the temperature deviation, really cold air pushing in. Good 6 to 8 degrees below average for this time of year. Really, really cold indeed. And um, yeah. All three runs showing this high pressure build and showing a cold air mass at around day 10. So good consensus from the models, but as we see with the ensembles now, there isn't it's not guaranteed by any means. So do you have a look at the ensembles? This is the GFS ensembles. You cold at the moment, rising to around or well above average for a period of time, for returning to around average in around 10 days time. Beyond that though, temperatures hover around average with, you see the operational on the thicker green line going well above and well below in the longer term. Some going very cold, others staying quite mild, so not a lot of general support. Of course, there are quite a few ensemble members going for it, but no more than perhaps a third, uh, not a significant majority. You can see the average um, of the ensembles is still around the 1981-2010 mean. So, not guaranteed by any means, but definitely an increased signal today with more of the major operational runs going for it. And there is a colder trend on the ensemble members. Um, it was milder than the average a couple of days ago. It's now more around average or maybe a touch below average in a few spots. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. But there is the potential of seeing something much, much colder into March. If we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, let's see what that is showing. You can see actually towards around the 6th to 8th of March, a significant number are going much colder. So perhaps the ECMWF ensembles are much, uh, much, uh, are much more bullish with this, catching on a little bit quicker. And I probably would lean more towards the ECMWF ensembles. There are almost 50 ensemble runs here, so show all the spread. Um, you can see the majority are, though, going down to minus 5 age of THPA in around early March. So perhaps we could be going into a cold spell, maybe, for a few days. Uh, it could be sustained though if we do see blocking and look at those two meter temperatures and around the 5th 6th of march for london five to seven degrees um for a couple days um 
there again would probably be colder um because of course the ensemble members sometimes overdo it a little bit overnight low temperatures widely down to freezing um and of course it will feel much colder than that with a raw recently wind probably won't feel above freezing so interesting signs in the longer term but of course we have to take with the pinch of salt not guaranteed by any means it's still at the day 10 time frame but this is not too unusual to be seeing easterly winds into march so i pr probably I'll probably give it a good odds of coming off, but we'll have to see, of course. As soon as it gets within sort of the five to seven day time frame, then I'll have a lot more confidence with it. So we'll have to see how it does over the next few days, but there still is this signal and it's increasing. Um, it has increased since yesterday. So now after we finish up, have a look at the UK Metal of Run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. Now you can see all the precipitation moving in, and you can see over the course of this evening that enhanced area precipitation potentially moving across northern England, uh, bringing maybe some heavier snowfall through the Midlands as well. And those showers continue before early hours uh, of the morning, around 5 to 6, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 a.m. Showers do cut out before we see more of a westerly flow with more rain pushing in, maybe some over higher ground, but nothing too substantial with a lot more cloud, quite a cloudy day tomorrow and through Saturday. And we do see weather fronts trying to bump in, but it's this high pressure out to our east that is trying to hold off these weather fronts. And you can see the far southeast only really gets weather fronts through Monday. Even then, I'd expect it to get shunted away once again with high pressure building back in. So nothing too substantial coming up, not looking too stormy. Um, we, were, we did potentially see the risk of more name storms coming, but it does look like that has uh, diminished and it's going to stay more generally just unsettled in the north and west, perhaps drier in the south and east. Now, if you have a look at max temperatures, you can see today, temperatures really didn't rise that much. 5 to 7 degrees in the south, around freezing further northwards. Of course, it's evening widely, down to 2 or 3 degrees. Below that, in a few areas, especially with snowfall on the ground. And tomorrow, temperatures going to recover a little bit in the south, 9, 10 degrees further northwards uh, in mid-single digits. Friday night, we could be seeing a frost in the far southeast with clearer skies, but further northwards and westwards with more cloud and milder air mass pushing in a little bit milder there. And by Saturday afternoon, widely 5 to 10 degrees, coldest over the high ground with 5 degrees, and in the south, 9 or 10. Saturday evening could be a bit of a frost around for some, but nothing too major. By Sunday afternoon, still similar temperatures, 9, 10 degrees in the south, closer to around 3 or 4 degrees in the north. Into Monday, not too cold overnight. Monday could be quite mild in the far southeast, tw uh, 12 degrees, as we are pulling up a southerly flow, but elsewhere in the northwest a bit colder. And by early hours of Tuesday, to start the March, 1st of March, widely temperatures are in f around freezing across the north and the west. And March 1st is going to be generally an average day, 8 to 10 degrees in the south, around 3 to 5, or maybe a touch milder in the north so not looking too bad to start march but of course in the days following that it's likely uh, given the current runs it could be going much much colder so yeah interesting signs in the longer term if you are a cold weather fan this could be a good thing but if you're looking forward to some spring sunshine um there will be plenty of that but i don't think there'll be a lot of spring warmth at this stage which i know a lot of people probably are now looking for given the dire winter we've had so far in terms of no real snowfall and the recent significant dangerous storms we have had so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed make sure you stay safe out there and i'll see you again for another video soon